Ben and Lorna Tenniswood never could have imagined this is where they would be living with their two sons. They thought buying the Hampton House at auction was a sound financial investment. When they first got the deed in 2021, they hadn't been inside since the renovations they completed for previous owner Medi Matin three years earlier. We realized very early on that we were gonna blow the budget that we had had in mind because it looked very different to when we had left it in 2018 to when we had purchased it in 21. It, it, was, was, it was in a bad way. It was in bad a bad way. way and it had been leaking, leaking, leaking. The floor was green with slime, slime and it had been left really, really badly. Their winning bid at auction was $50,000. The sheriff, Nick Murphy, told them that day to pay just the outstanding taxes and court fees, a total of less than $3,000. Then the Tenniswoods lawyer, Michael McKenzie, set to work getting the rest of the money to the sheriff's office. So I went to the sheriff in question and I said, uh, my client's going to arrange to get the balance of the money up to the $50,000. Um, how long before um, you need it? And his reply to me was, I don't think he has to pay it. So when the sheriff's telling you this, you're thinking, well, that doesn't make any sense at all. Well, in fact, that's what I said to the sheriff. I said, I don't think you're right about this. I think you're wrong. He had advised that he was going to go to his legal department. I assumed they knew what they were doing. We have the email that Sheriff Nick Murphy sent back three weeks after the auction. Your client is not responsible to pay the additional outstanding balance. He even added, I'm sure your clients will be pleased to hear this. It was the sheriff who assured me he got an opinion. And I understood he was going to Department of Justice to get his opinion. And I said, fine, if that's the opinion you've got, I, I would have expected different, but we're happy to hear that. Is there a point now where you come to the realization if something seems too good to be true, yeah. There's something wrong here. $2,900 for this house and 40 acres. There was no reason to question the sheriff. It would be kind of presumptuous of us to do so. He was the person holding the auction. We assumed he knew what he was doing. In New York, Medi Matten claims he had no idea that the home he owned in Nova Scotia had been auctioned off because of his $10,000 debt. The shock of it, the shock of having your house taken from you without even being told. What? Well, that's the worst. That's the worst. And it wasn't only the house. It was the 40 acres. And what? For $10,000? Just, this is wrong. This is wrong. A month after learning of the auction, Medi offered the Tennis Woods $15,000 to buy the house back. They refused and they started pouring money into the home, working around the clock. Even little Theo and Aiden had jobs to do. And then an email that changed everything. We got the letter from the sheriff saying, basically, oops, we made a mistake. Um, uh, we were wrong. Uh, your client owes the, the balance. This is that oops email, with the sheriff admitting the error and apologizing. The tennis woods initially resisted paying. And we had what? already infested those funds into the house. We were deep into the build here. At that point, it seemed sensible that it was either us that takes the hit or they take the hit. It was their error, so it would seem reasonable that they should take the hit. Their lawyer sent this email outlining that argument back to the sheriff's office. The Tennis Woods didn't hear another word about it until five months later, when the province sent them this email demanding payment. Where does it go from there? We came to an agreement, that is the Tennis Woods and I, that I would go back and tell them um, that we would pay it, but out of the sale proceeds of the house. He says as he was preparing that agreement with the house recently listed on the market, the office of the Attorney General dropped a bombshell it put a legal hold on the house, barring the tennis woods from selling it. I received a notice that they were proceeding to court. The attorney general was to ask that the sale be set aside. Essentially, they're saying, take the house away from the tennis woods. Yes, that's exactly what they're saying. 
The province of Nova Scotia claims in its suit that the deed should be declared null and void, and that the home should be returned to Medi Matin because of irregularities at auction. Irregularities directly attributed to the sheriff who conducted the auction. It, to me, it's a very novel argument to say, Judge, we've done everything wrong, but we want you to find that they've done it wrong because we gave them the wrong advice. In the Attorney General's claim against the Tennis Woods, they list the errors made by their own sheriff, Nick Murphy. He didn't properly inform Medi Matten that an auction date had been set. He didn't post auction notices on the properties. He incorrectly advised the Tennis Woods that they didn't have to pay the full bid price. The Tennis Woods did nothing wrong. And Mr. Medi comes into possession, potentially, of a home that has increased in value several hundred percent. I have a problem with that. Well, there we go. Wow. That's what we got so far. This is your Tennis Woods versus Nova Scotia. This is it. Yes. This is our life. Yes. In a box. In a box <laughs> that now comes with us everywhere. Ian and Lorna Tenniswood can no longer afford a lawyer, and so they're representing themselves. You guys have turned into uh, lawyers at this point. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's been daunting. It has um, been daunting. Yeah, it's just nerve-wracking. Buried in paperwork as they prepare for their defense, the Tenniswoods have made some shocking discoveries. Dozens of people in the Nova Scotia Department of Justice were aware of errors relating to the auction for months. But they only appear to have acted on those errors after Medi Matten began lobbying the government and Nova Scotia's ombudsman. I called everybody. So I was calling every single agency, any, every, any municipality, to be like, what happened? What happened? When you start tracking the dates of emails and putting them together, you realize who knew what at what time. And you, yeah, it's, it's horrifying. When did they let you know that there was a problem? A year later. So all that time as you're pouring money into this house, you've discovered that they knew there was a problem with this, oh, yeah. but they didn't act on it for a year. Exactly one year. Yeah, there are 42 government personnel over nine different government departments that have been actively working to work out a legal way to get us out of this house and give the keys to the former owner. The tennis would say had the government acted when they knew there were errors, they wouldn't have spent $600,000 on renovations. The motivation to hide their mistakes is completely unknown. This doesn't tell us why. This doesn't tell us why. This doesn't tell us why. None of these tell us why. They had clearly indicated there were errors. Why did you choose to sit on it, bury it, and work out a sneaky way of getting around it a year later, and you're still working on it now? Medi Matten stands to reclaim a home that is now renovated to the hilt because of those errors. He says he deserves the house back and more. I want my house back, I want my land back, and I want to be paid for my pain. And what's your pain worth? My pain? Millions, millions of dollars, millions of dollars. That's how much my pain is worth. This is a prima donna house. There's a Bay of Fundy. There's a whole, there's a whole, uh, a lighthouse on the property. This is not a $10,000, $50,000 property. Have you seen what the house looks like now? Yeah, I have. And what do you make of that? Horrible. Destroyed my life. They think they did a great job. Huh. I'm sorry. You know, disaster. Disaster. That's not my house. I'm never, I'm never going to be all right with this. This will not end right. This will not end right. Up next. It yes. feels like Nova Scotia against us. Struggling to fight the system. Is your office doing any kind of investigation into the way these sales are conducted? When W5 continues. Since 1911, this lighthouse in Hampton, Nova Scotia has been guiding fishermen through rough waters. 
but it's offering little help to the beleaguered owners of the home behind it. Former owner Medi Matten insists the Hampton House is an integral part of his spiritual group and that he is the rightful owner, not the tennis woods. No way. No way. This is a legacied house. This is not just a house. This is part of our legacy. But some residents of Hampton feel differently. Brinton Forbes is the president of the local Lighthouse and Historical Society. When you look at this house now, how, what do you feel? I feel it's one of the most wonderful things that has happened to our community. And very pleased uh, that they have changed it and transformed it into something of pride. Are people in the community sort of chatting about the drama that's unfolding here? Some are. And what I, are they saying? I think most people would feel just like me. It's a David and Goliath situation. It is so unjust. It's just sad, wrong. Nova Scotia should own up to the problem they have created. Ernie Connell grew up in Hampton. For decades, he watched the house fall into disrepair until the tennis woods transformed it. And I was so happy when uh, Ian and his wife bought it because a lot of people wanted to bring it back like this, but nobody ever did. What do you make of the mess that has resulted in all of this? It's a mess. It's a mess. This is the document that says this house belongs to you. And it yeah. is. Well, it looks pretty worthless now, honestly. This is the most argued about piece of paper in this entire file. The tennis woods may hold the deed, but the government of Nova Scotia has filed a lawsuit saying the house should be returned to Medi because of errors made by their own sheriff. What they're trying to do is rip up the deed. It doesn't count. It doesn't count. We're going to give the keys to a man that went pff, to your judgment, pff, to your province. We're going to give him the case. This house represented a big dream for you guys. Yeah. How do you view the house now? We hate it. I hate it's it. A, I know, so do I. I do. It's, a, it's a great house. It it's is. just, it's so tainted. It's a prison of our own making. Yeah. But W5 has learned that the Hampton House isn't the only Nova Scotia property auctioned off with question marks. This three-acre parcel of land was also sold at auction by the very same sheriff, same month, same year as the tennis woods. And the owner says he was not warned about the auction. No signs were posted on the property. The way he found out that this land was no longer his was when his wife went to pay the property taxes. Look, the wife come home confused, like, that property ain't your name, and I'm like, I don't understand how that's possible. Like, Was there a notice put up here? Did you get no, anything in the no, mail? No, there was no notice and there was nothing in the mail. The taxes were still paid ahead for another, I think we still were paid ahead for another year or so. A.J. Cole says he owed money for equipment that he had purchased, but that he was given no warning that the debt would be settled through the sale of his land. Remember, before an auction, the sheriff is required to notify the owner of the land and post signs on the property. Across the province on East Loon Lake, another Nova Scotia property was sold out from under its owner, 83-year-old Nelson Miller. They, they should have notified me. Nelson only found out that the cabin and land he owned for over 40 years had been sold when he was asked by the new owner to settle an electricity bill. The printer floored me. My property wasn't for sale and I knew nothing about it being sold. Just the thoughts that they did that and didn't notify me. That they, they could do something like that and not have to tell, tell me. And I paid taxes every year for 43 years. The person who snapped up Nelson's property gave it back, but it took thousands of dollars in legal bills for both of them to sort it all out. I've spent a lot of money. I've had a lawyer for oh, I, two years or more. 
Well, they, they, they should be responsible for some of my expenses. It's not over yet. And then there's this parcel of oceanfront land that was auctioned off along Greville Bay for about $10,000. When the winning bidder went to see it, she says there was nothing there, just an eroded cliff and water. The county had auctioned off land that was swept away in a storm in the 1970s. We have questions for the sheriff's office in Annapolis Valley about the way these auctions are conducted, particularly those involving Sheriff Nick Murphy. Our repeated requests for an interview were declined, and so we caught up with Murphy's boss, Nova Scotia's chief sheriff, Leanne Sample, outside the justice offices in Halifax. Is your office doing any kind of investigation into the way these sales are conducted? We've just found a number of anomalies with sales, not just one. And I'm just wondering whether there's any plan to do, a, to do an investigation. Lori, I do believe you were uh, corresponded with by our communications section, so you would just have to take whatever, their, whatever um, information they've provided to you. So. But the communications department has refused to comment, and so we took it up the ladder to the man in charge of the sheriff's department Nova Scotia's Attorney General, Brad Johns. But we have found cases of people having land sold without being notified. I'm wondering whether or not it's time to look at how the sheriff is conducting the sales. Well, I, uh, what I would say, this is the first that uh, you're, you're suggesting there's a couple of cases. This is the first time I've heard of that, so I can certainly look into it. But as far as I'm aware, there's no, no real issues with this. The minister says he can't speak specifically about the Tennis Woods case because it's before the courts. Mehdi Matten has now hired lawyer Jamie McNeil to represent him in the province's legal action against the Tennis Woods. The sheriff's sale did not go the way the public would expect the sheriff's sale to go. There is the very real possibility the property won't end up back to him and he'll be looking at monetary compensation himself for the loss of those properties. Remember, this whole mess started when Medi didn't pay his outstanding debt to the tennis woods. Do you take any personal responsibility? In absolutely this? have to, absolutely have to. If you see the way I was right in the beginning, I just blame myself. Until I realized and investigated, and I said, no, Medi, you didn't do this. It was done to you. It was done to you, and then I about faced. And I said, anybody who says that I did anything wrong will no longer be in my life, will no longer be in my life, because I was maligned. And even though it was the sheriff who made errors during the auction, Medi's rage lies with Ian and Lorna. They feel that that house is theirs. They deserve that shit. That's what they feel. And that's why this isn't gonna end well. Because if you feel you deserve my house, well, I feel otherwise, and I'm, I'm going to weigh in in every possible way. What does that mean, Maddie? That means they're not going to do this to me at any price. And they didn't know that. And they didn't, and they didn't factor that in. They didn't factor the crazy <laughs> that they did this to. I don't want any violence to come to anybody, but at the same time, it's like, this is a violent thing. But when you talk about violence, like, that's concerning. It should, it should be concerning. It's concerning to me. I hear it and I'm like, Maddie, that's not right. And, and, and essentially what I'm saying is that there's a deep hurt there and, and it's like an animal. It's like, it's like if you corner an animal, it's gonna fight back. It's gonna fight back in a really, really awful way. And the way I fight back is not the same way that most people fight back. And I'm taking all the precautions for myself so that I don't become a person I don't want to become. Um, but I really need the help of the courts, and I really need my house back, and I really need these people to get the fuck out of my life permanently, period. And I need them to stop with me. And if they don't, there's no telling what my limits are. I know that. I know that about myself. I'm not limited like other people, you know? Mehdi says that you guys have destroyed him, that you're essentially stealing the home from him. <laughs> I'm afraid not, man. 
Um, you don't love this house. You didn't care for this house and you treated it so poorly that, frankly, without us, it would have fallen down anyway. OK, the sheriff didn't warn him, but, my God, I don't know how many warnings an adult would need. It's like dealing with a toddler. This is where Ian and Lorna are mounting their battle to keep the Hampton House. We're our own lawyers and we're kind of making stuff up as we go along now and... Yeah, I don't know. It's, 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 it's a mess over here. It yes. feels like Nova Scotia against us because I think that truly is what it is. Nova Scotia against two little people and all they did was bought a house at an auction. For months, the Tennis Woods have been acting as their own lawyers, but they now realize they need help in fighting the province of Nova Scotia. And so they've hired a lawyer who will only be paid if he wins or if there's a settlement. The trial isn't slated to begin until August of 2024. We'll be back with the last word. Is now turning onto Elm Street, and it will be only a matter In 2013, of on the 50th anniversary of President Kennedy's assassination, W5 took a look back at the legacy of JFK and the events that unfolded on that fateful day. And then this shot entered from the front and blew out the back of the president's head. And we also took a look in a different direction. History tells us what happened here, but what it does not do is answer the compelling question, what if it never did happen? What if JFK had lived? Why are we still talking about JFK? My belief is that had John Kennedy lived, we would not have been in a shooting war in Vietnam. Without the war in Vietnam, you would not have had the level of anti-Americanism, the flirtations with violence, the embrace of flag burning. Kennedy as world savior, it is a popular view. But there was a hidden side to him as well. He was exposing himself to potential blackmail at every moment, you know, consorting with the mistress of a mafia chief in Chicago. You can watch that full story as well as all of our new investigations on W5's official YouTube channel. And subscribe to our newsletter to get an early look at the stories we're working on. I'm Avery Haynes. On behalf of everyone at W5, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.